Hi, everyone. My name is Nikhil Barthwal, um, and I'm going to be talking about K-Native. Uh, what K-Native, and we'll go into details of it, of course, but what K-Native is Kubernetes framework for managing serverless workloads. Uh, the way I've structured this, uh, this talk is I have about half of it is theory, so I'll go through my slides, explain what I'm everything about K-Native. And then the remaining half of it is demo. Now, the demo is actually from the GitHub link that you see below. Right. The demo itself is quite big, so I'm only going to be covering parts of the demo. I'm not going to go into details of the entire demo, of course, but you have the link. Feel free to play around with it and you have my contact information. So should you need to contact me, just feel free to ping me anytime. So let's get started. Introduction to Knative was Knative, right? So like I mentioned, Knative is basically a Kubernetes platform for building block basically sub building blocks of serverless now kubernetes is essentially a platform for platform it's never really a starting point but it's never really an end game but it's a great place to start so it's basically think of it as you have kubernetes as a platform you have layers and layers and then you have k native on top and you have other layers on top of k native so when i show the entire technology stack you would actually see that but essentially what k native provides you is an extension components on top of Kubernetes for serverless computing. So Kubernetes is a de facto platform. It's by far the most um, open source, uh, by far the most popular container orchestration system out there. It has, uh, there's a diagram of Kubernetes. It has pods and you know it has all the containers where it runs. But essentially what it is, is it's basically a descriptive definition of how your infrastructure should look like. You're mentioning the state of the system. It's a descriptive system. And what Kubernetes as such does is tries to maintain that state. So if you deviate off, it will basically take corrective actions to bring the system back to the desired state. That's what it is. It's an orchestration system. And it handles a lot of, a lot of things for you. So it handles scheduling, scaling, lifecycle, naming, discovery. You have the full list. It's, it's open source. It's quite popular. I'm sure you would have heard the name of it, but it's handling all these things for you. And there's a large body of Kubernetes ecosystem. It's by far the most popular or container orchestration systems. It's fully open source. So Google has GKE, Amazon supports it using EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. Azure has AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service. So there's a big ecosystem around Kubernetes. And let's switch to serverless, right? What do we mean by serverless computing? Now, when we look from an operational point of view, what serverless brings to table is, it brings you all, infra, no infra management. It brings you an automated infra management. It manages the security, it manages the infrastructure, but the characteristic of serverless, the unique characteristic of serverless is you pay for use. So typically in normal uh, container-based systems, you're paying for the capacity. In serverless, you're paying for the use. So if you're not using your container, if you're not using your whatever function, it basically gets switched off. So it is handling an auto scaling for you where it scales from zero to infinity or whatever you configure it to. So that auto scaling is all handled for you. So you're only paying for what you're using. And from a programming point of view, it's service-based. Right, and it's an event-driven platform. So Service-based means you have these computational units. Uh, I'm gonna use the term service in a little broad way. If you're using something like AWS Lambda, it basically means functions. If you're using container serverless systems, which is what Knative is, service there means containers. But service is more of a broad term. It's event-driven. So events are fired, you respond to those events. So it's an event-driven system. And something very particular about Knative is that it's portable. Now, typically what happens with serverless systems is there's a common criticism of serverless that's vendor lock-in. And the reason is that all the infrastructure is handled for you. So you don't really have, you don't get to choose anything or you don't really have any control over it. So the underlying system is basically handling. So you're basically tied to that system. Now, in, in Knative, you're not tied to the underlying system. You're actually tied to Kubernetes, but then again, it's an open source system. So you're, you're not really vendor locked here. That's why it's portable. Any cloud vendor or any kind of distributed system that provides Kubernetes is practically everybody 
you can actually run Knative on top of it. That's why there's a portability aspect, which is very particular to Knative or serverless containers. Uh, so talking about containers, containers are industry standard. So you basically have pre-built images and you can pick any programming language, any library, even binaries for that matter. Um, you could actually build, so you can have these containers and containers are kind of industry standard, right? So if you look at the trend, it's actually increasing so it's basically an industry standard. Um, and then let's switch gears and let's talk about Knative project, okay? So Knative project, what it is, it's, it basically gives you the set of components for serverless system. Now, you, there were, prior to version eight, there were actually three components. There were serving, eventing, and build. And after version 0.8, there's actually two components. So that is why you see that build crossed out on the slide. Serving is basically the base component that talks about all the scaling of your services. So that's serving. Eventing is the framework that lets you create events for which these services respond to, so that's eventing. Build was initially how you deploy these systems. So going from source code to containers. Now that has actually been deprecated and the officially supported system is Tecton. Tecton is a separate project. It works with Knative, but it's a separate project completely. So we are not gonna talk about Tecton too much, but essentially what it is, is it's a Kubernetes-based CI-CD systems, a CI-CD system. And like I said, it's open source. And what Knative is giving you is, it's giving you all the basic ingredients for serverless uh, computing that solves the modern development patterns. And essentially Knative started as a joint project, as a consortium between Google, IBM, Red Hat, which is the same now, SAP, Pivotal, and so on. So Knative incorporates all the learnings from all of these partners. And you have the website knative.dev, right? So knative.dev, let's actually check out knative.dev. Knative.dev, that's the website. So you have all the information here. So now you see the two main components, serving and eventing. There's actually a Slack channel you could you could actually go to the GitHub repository. So you could actually see uh, native. Now mine, Knative. So that's the GitHub repository for it. So you have the eventing and serving as the two main uh, components. You have the docs and so on. So that's the website. So a lot of good information there on Knative project. Now, what's the motivation for Knative? Developers want serverless systems. And the reason why they want serverless is they want to run their code. They don't want to handle infrastructure. And developers tend to be very opinionated. You know, they have their own favorite programming languages and dependencies that they passionately, they are passionate about it. So they want the flexibility to run any kind of language or any kind of framework that they choose on, on, on their platform. So that's what containers basically bring you. So that's what developers basically want. And that's why they love serverless is because they don't have to manage the infrastructure. Operator on the other hand, like Kubernetes, because Kubernetes is a great orchestration system. They don't want to handle, it's not the right abstraction for developers, but operators love Kubernetes because you know it's a very descriptive system. They describe the state, everything is handled for you. So Knative basically sits between the two. It's built on top of Kubernetes. So the operators love that. Operators handle the cluster, the base cluster. And then on top of it is Knative and the developers have built their code on top of Knative. So it's, it's the glue between the developer view and the operator view. So that's the motivation. So there are, like I said, there are two basically point of views. There are two ways of looking at it. So let's actually look at the developer view for Knative. Now, developers want to write code. So that's what they want. What they don't want is they don't want to handle the infrastructure. So they don't want logging. They don't want monitoring. They don't want to build all these you know, images and so on. I just have my Docker file where I give the steps of how I'm going to build the container. Everything should be taken care of. I don't want to do it myself. I don't want to handle all the orchestration. So that's what developers want, and that's the Knative view for developers. Now, going back to Knative views for operators, Knative is handling all the infrastructure complexity for you, right? So you don't really have to worry about too much. You just have to worry about describing your state, what you want, and Knative takes care of it. 
I've mentioned that repeatedly, it's basically a universal system supported by all major providers, right? And that enables portability across multiple providers that also enables portability across on-prem and cloud, by the way. And it's a very extendable platform with clear separation of concerns, right? It has an open source API, which is pretty well documented. Like I said, it's a platform for building platform. So it's, it has to be by definition, very extendable. So there's portability associated with Kubernetes because it's offered by all cl uh, cloud providers and then Knative, which is built on top of Kubernetes. So let's look at the Knative stack. So when you look at the Knative stack, we start with the underlying platform, uh, which is Kubernetes. Then we have service mesh. Now the default service mesh that comes with uh, Kubernetes and with Knative, which is the one we're going to be using for our demo, is Istio. So you see the Istio there, but you could choose to use Glue, Ambassador, or any other service mesh if you want to. On top of it are the two or three, I'll call two because the more recent versions only have two basic primitives and that's serving and event. Tecton is a separate project by itself. So you could use it with Knative, but as I mentioned, it's not really part of Knative project. So you have the serving and eventing, that's the base layer for Knative. And then on top, you have this uh, different products that are built on top of Knative. So you have Google Cloud Run, Google Cloud Run on GKE, now it's renamed as Google Cloud Run for Anthos. IBM and Red Hat being partners, they have their own products, Kubernetes Service, OpenShift, Trigger Mesh, SAP Kaima, such and such. So, um, this is the serverless portfolio on Google Cloud. I'm going to be focusing mostly on candidate because I don't want to make this talks very specific to Google Cloud. I want to kind of keep it broad. So Knative is like the open source, so that's broadly applicable for any vendor. But you do have a managed, it's not technically correct, but it's think of it as a managed Knative service. Now, the reason why it's not technically correct is because the underlying code between Cloud Run and Cloud Run on GK is a little different from Knative. But what Cloud Run and Cloud Run on GK does is basically giving you the same Knative capability that you have running on-prem on your clusters is managed for you. They're both very similar to each other, but in Cloud Run, you have everything fully managed. So you don't really have a control of the cluster. Whereas Cloud Run on GKE or Cloud Run for Anthos, what you have is you have basically running on GKE cluster. Now, the reason why you want to sometimes run on GKE cluster is because a lot of, lot of clients, a lot of companies already have a lot of stuff built on GKE. So they want to continue using that platform because they are already using it and they're used to it. Also, Cloud Run on GKE, you have the access to underlying cluster. So that's good that you have more control. Of course, when you have more control, you obviously have to manage that infrastructure. So there are upsides and downsides also. So if you want a fully managed completely, I just want to run my code and I don't want to worry about anything, that's Cloud Run. Now, the API, so Knative is a product in itself, but Knative can also be thought of as a reference API. Okay. And the reason why it's reference API is across all of this portfolio, it's the same API. So what that, what that gives you, the advantage you have is you can take a workload on your on-prem running Knative and you can take it to the cloud and run cloud run on run it on cloud run and bring it back. So it gives you the possibility of having a hybrid cloud, right? You have part of your infrastructure locally, part of your infrastructure on cloud, and you can move the workloads across each other seamlessly. So the hybrid cloud capability comes up and you can obviously go and if, and if you have AKS and you're running Knative on other cloud vendors, you can actually take the workloads there also and move them across on-prem or different cloud vendors. So that, that possibility also exists. So let's go into details of uh, Knative components now. So let's talk about serving first. Okay, so what is serving? Serving is basically the one that handles your components, right? So it's talking about deployment of containers. It's talking about um, scaling. Now in, on slides, I mentioned zero to N, uh, but mind you, this is all configurable because one of the common criticism of 
uh, serverless is that it has a cold start problem. So you sometimes you don't want the compound instance to go down to zero because it takes time to come back up. So to prevent, you might have to configure or change sometimes auto scaling of one to infinity or one to n, whatever. You you probably want to have an upper limit also because you want to have some kind of cost control, right? I don't want to have like tens of thousands of containers running and then I have to pay for them also. So sometimes people like to have lower and upper limits, but theoretically you can have scaling from zero to infinity. It has an inbuilt configuration and revision management. And it also enables you to do traffic splitting revisions. Now, why is that important? It's important because you do want to have some kind of sometimes gradual deployment, right? I release a new version. I'm not sure if it works. So I'm going to only have traffic serving 10% and the 90% should go to the one that works. So you can split the traffic and gradually you can make the profit 100%. So you have different traffic splitting. You can do all this kind of A-B experiments. Uh, in my demo, depending on how much time I have, I'll actually show traffic splitting between different revisions. But, but yeah, you have you have all of these divisions and you have traffic splitting. Knative by design was something like a loosely coupled component. So you can pick and choose the components you want and replace the components you don't want. So for example, if you don't want logging or monitoring, you can take out that component and replace it with your own built-in. So it gives you that flexibility. It's a it's a pluggable system and we already talked about auto scalers auto scaler you can configure it or you can swap it out for your own custom code depending on what you want so the system is very being open source it's very open by definition and you can mix and match things the way you want of course mixing and matching things means more operational work but that's the price you pay for more flexibility so knative serving primitives um, I'm going to show with demo how traffic splitting and how different revisions etc work but essentially you have a configuration which is a desired state of application that kind of follow the 12 factor methodology and then you have all of these deployments as separate revisions right they're point in time snapshots for your code and configurations and then you have root that actually maps traffic to these divisions so that's what knative has and like I mentioned before, you can split between multiple revisions. In my demo, I'll try to show that. Moving on, uh, let's talk about the eventing framework. So Knative eventing. By definition, serverless systems are loosely coupled event-driven platform, event-driven architecture systems, right? So you have events, you respond to that events, and you bind these event producers in different services. So you know you have a broker, you have a channel, Again, demo week, things become more clear, but you have like a broker, you have your channel, you have different event types, and you define all your custom event pipelines to connect to your multiple services. So events come and you respond. You have all sorts of different event sources, right? You have, you have like the messaging bus for Google, which is pops up. You have like Kubernetes event source. You can have GitHub. You can have uh, Amazon SQS source, and you could even have Kafka. Kafka is a very popular, uh, message broker which is again open source it's a simple diagram you have different event source and you have a broker and then you have services that actually have triggers associated with it so services would subscribe to a trigger and trigger would basically collect the message from broker filter it and deliver it to the service now this is a simplified picture you actually can have much more complicated in the sense you can have channels that subscribe to multiple services uh, the demo has that again depending on time i don't know how far i'll get but i can show you some of how the channels work and you can have services calling each other so you can build like a very flexible event driven platform here with this eventing framework so you have different event sources right you have apache kafka aws sqs conjo pops up github just about everyone there's a full list here you can write your own event sources for custom event source. Hopefully you should have to do that because all the common event sources are already captured, but you could do that if you choose to. Um, so what are the eventing use cases? Right? You could have different use cases like you can have a cron job. A cron job event source is the one actually I use on my demo, but 
you can have to write weekly reports you can press as well as iot events pubsub kafka so on you can even have like work um, workflows defined on your github by github web so there are a lot of examples of uh, how eventing can be used below link would basically tell you it gives you some of the good use cases for eventing but let's talk about building now i'm not going to talk too much about the building because the original build uh, has been deprecated so before point 8 was built now it's uh, post point 8 is stacked on uh, build was basically how you would build from your source code to containers and build pipe you can define build pipelines but that's all now kind of deprecated and it has been replaced by Tecton. Um, I'm going to cover Tecton very briefly. I won't have it as part of demo because it's not strictly a Knative um, component anymore. It's a separate project of its own. But what it is, is basically a Kubernetes style CICD um, deployment system. Typically, the common criticism for something like a traditional Jenkins is you have these agents, right? And you have every time your build request comes, these agents serve the request. But the problem with these agents are they are static. You have fixed number. You can't easily or automatically scale up and scale down. And if you're not using your system, you're still paying for them. With, with Kubernetes CI/CD, you can scale up and you can scale down these agents as you want. So if you have basically, you have a controller of course, or your master, but then you can have spin up n number of slaves and scale up and scale down as per your need. So that's what Tecton brings to the table. There's a, Jenkins also has, I think Jenkins X, which basically shares similar goals with Tectons. Even the code between the two is actually quite common. So Jenkins X basically is takes that Kubernetes style CI CD on top of uh, traditional Jenkins. So Knative uh, community, right? These are some of the stats. They're actually old stats, so now Hopefully things are going to be much better. We have a lot of contributors. You have a Slack channel. I think I have a link to that Slack channel. So I welcome you to join and contribute. Um, but there are a lot of contributing companies and pull requests. Knative community is pretty big today. It has auto scale, managed workloads. It provides several benefits like one step deploy and so on. And as we move to the demo, so I'm actually going to switch to the demo now. Um, I'll show some of the aspects of Knative. I have about Okay, 25 minutes remaining, that's good. So the demo I'm actually going to be using is if you go to my GitHub, nikhilbarkhar.com slash GitHub and the link also was there on my slides, the first link, that's the demo. Um, so I have my slides here, that's the link for the demo and you have like whole different examples for setup, eventing and so on. Now. I've already set up my cluster in the interest of time, I would not be repeating the setup steps, but there's a setup folder, which basically talks about what steps you need to do. And these are the scripts that run a bunch of commands. So if you wanna see how setup is done, you can actually open up, let's say create setup. It will show you all the detail. How would I set up my cluster? So everything, all the information on how you set up is here. But for now, I have my cluster and I have a VM running with all the cluster and everything set up. And I'm gonna be taking some examples from serving and some examples from eventing. I'm going to be skipping examples from build and I'm also be skipping examples from Google Cloud because I wanna focus more on the open source part of it because not everybody is in Google Cloud and I want you guys to have information that you could probably use, go back and take, use it on your job, even if you're not, not using GCP. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be mostly focusing on these two parts of it. So these two parts of it, serving and eventing. Okay, so let's go to some simple example. So let's go to hello world, say, you know, go to hello world, the starting point for everything. And I have a bunch of my simple services and I'm going to show what it is, but Knative serving has a lot of samples, right? So you can actually go to the samples and it, it has wonderful examples with different programming languages of what you want to use. But going back, we'll create one simple example of hello world service. I have two languages and C sharp and Python. I think I'll probably use Python here. And I have this small script. So it's all, it's pretty simple. It takes hello world. It has basically a variable defined called target. And all it does is, you know, 
defines hello world v1 gets the world and returns the simple string so we'll see a demo of it and there's an associated docker file that shows how to build this code so we are actually going to build this okay so let me go to my terminal okay maybe this is a little better and uh, something wrong with the instance sorry i think i i need to create a new instance maybe to set up ssh uh, transferring the keys so it will take time okay, I don't know. Oh, it probably deleted everything. Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? Oh, shoot. Okay. I'll probably switch back to a terminal then in that case. That's fine. Because I have everything set up on my terminal, but I will zoom the code because I don't want... Uh, this should be... Yeah. Terminal went off. Apologies. I think I did some configuration changes so so let's actually go to serving examples so i can do everything from here hello world right um so we're gonna have a simple where am i yeah simple python service so we'll just look at this code hello world python okay So that's my docker file and what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to build this image and i'm using uh, google container registry uh, as my uh, cloud uh, container registry but if you have docker hub or something you can actually use that one so it, it doesn't have to be google it just would be any container registry so i'm going to build this and my project id here is Okay, so I'm going to build this image. Okay. Not having Docker. Why am I not having Docker? I'm so sorry. I think I, uh, the images, there was some reset done. Okay, I'll try to install it if it works good. If it doesn't work, I'll just walk through the example. Sorry, I, I wish I could have shown, uh, but I had everything set up in my VM. It just, everything got deleted. I don't know how it got deleted. I can set it up again, but it probably will take time uh, for me to do that. So that's it. Is Docker Demon running on this? If not, okay. Okay, let me actually walk through the demo rather than showing because the demo is long, I won't be able to complete it anyway. So let's actually walk through the demo. So you're going to build this image, okay, and you're going to push it. And once you push it, it actually will come here. It actually would come here um, in the container registry, okay. The container registry and container registry would have that image and then i'm going to apply this file and when i apply this file uh, let's look at this file scan native service it says take this container so this is my project on my gcp but if you have this is basically a location of your container history you would take this image and you define an environment variable called target okay target v1 and when you actually apply, you could actually see all of this um, running. Let me actually talk a little bit. My installation would probably take time and will eat up most of my time. So my apologies, I could have just picked up this VM. I'll probably refresh this image, but I won't have time to do it. Right now, App Engine, Compute Engine, da, da, da. yeah. 
or I can just quickly See if I can get things working pretty fast. Or maybe not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be, I can set this instance up fast enough, so I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, sorry, I'll, we'll just walk through the demo. I don't have a lot of time anyway left, so I'll just walk through the demo. So when you deploy the service, you would have all of these pods running and they'll show you a status. Okay, so this is how you do. And then to test the service, you just get the external IP. So that's the command for external IP. And then you make a request to the service. So you say curl uh, the service and zip is basically a service that what it does is if you have an IP, it will basically convert it to a URL. So you can actually use zip and it will display hello v1. And v1 is basically the environment name. now. If you go back to this example, and let's go to a little bit more complicated examples, I can change the configuration. So here I'm talking about multiple services. So here I'm actually going to be talking about another same service, the same Docker image, but the variable name will be V2, it won't be V1. So the variable name is V2 and I go back and now I'm gonna deploy the second service Right, so this is the YAML file we saw, and it will have the pods. And if I curl them, it will say hello v2. I could change the container image also, but I'll just use the same one and I can have a v3 also. So it could have like by BP, you can change it whichever way you want. Now, this is an example of traffic splitting. In traffic splitting, what you do is you have this different current and you see you define, and this is the part I wanna actually highlight. Uh, let me actually highlight this part. I should probably zoom out, but yeah, this is better visible. So current 100%, latest zero. So I can apply and I can have all of these services. And then if I deploy this new version, you would see that I'll have V1, V2, you know, Statistically, I can split this traffic 50-50. So now here I'm split, uh, splitting the traffic 50-50 and I have two different revisions names. So every revision will have a different name and I can just do 50-50 and apply this change, uh, split traffic. And then if I run through multiple times, statistically, I should get like a 50-50 kind of a distribution. So this is, this is going to be a traffic distance example. I can configure the auto scaling and in the auto scaling configuration, what I have is I can define some parameters. So I, I have the four tier load test tool. I have these parameters. It will actually scale down to zero. And how you configure it is you define these min scales and math scales. So if I look at the service YAML file here, it defines a target of one. And then it says min scale is one, max scale is five. So now my maximum auto scaling would maximum have five instances and minimum one. And this is important to prevent cold start problem. Now, usually what you have is in a big system, you have multi-tier system. So you have tier one, which is where the customers would basically interact. And then you have tier two, tier three. And typically you don't want a cold start problem on your tier one services because that impacts your availability, right? Or that, that, is, that impacts directly to the customer. So, it won't be available, it will be slow to respond, it takes time to boot up, the customers would notice it. So tier one services generally should not be auto scaled to zero. They should generally have at least one to prevent cold start. You can have the tier two, tier three services in zero to five, that isn't a problem. So this is your auto scaler. 
So once you do that, you basically would have, you could scale down to five or you can go down to zero. Okay. So now that's your auto scaling. Uh, this is the cloud run deployment. Now I could actually deploy to cloud run. Uh, these are my three uh, cloud run portfolio services and I can have, I have to define G cloud. Cloud run as of now is only available in certain so, uh, certain regions because it's not it's not really um, it, it's it's released but it's not available in all regions. So I can have something like G Cloud configuration activate, and then I push the container to the registry. I define the project. I submit a tag and I deploy. Okay, let's see if I can just um, install. Uh, Docker and probably do a demo on cloud run. That I should be able to do it rather easily. Knative uh, would be a rather more difficult task. Yeah, I don't know. My instance got rebooted and I think everything, uh, everything basically, all my files and everything went down because I had the entire cluster and everything set up. So um, yeah, so I'll install the Docker or I could just, uh, Okay, so yeah, I think it's stuck in general. Can I do that? How long would it take? I should be able to do something. Yeah. So let's do the background. Background is happening. Install Docker daemon. Uh, okay. Docker daemon. Is it coming? Docker to DMG. See if I can do something here. Something's something special. Anyway, let, let me. Sorry, I, I don't think I'll have time to fix this. Okay, so deploy to Kubernetes. Kubernetes, you actually have a choice. You could do Cloud Run, you can do Cloud Run on Anthos, you can have the cluster. You pick and you would deploy and it gets deployed to the region and then you're like, great, it's deployed with 100%. And then Cloud Run, you can actually access Cloud Run from here. So you go to this panel, you go to compute and you have Cloud Run. And when you go to Cloud Run, you actually would see the instances and manage create service. Can I do it from, uh, I don't really have, allow an authenticated yeah i could i could do that from here but i don't really have an image on my registry and you would see all the revisions here and then once you click you actually get some xml so this is the knative equal sorry yaml this is the knative equal and yaml api that you have so this is cloud run okay you would basically see the yaml part here and then you can test the service in the sense you can have you do a simple testing, you can have update the target variables and so on, and then you deploy it to Cloud Run. 
Okay. So gRPC eventing works the same way. You basically have a broker, trigger, and a service. Okay. You like it's open source, so sorry for the demo mess up, but you can just clone the repository and play it with yourself. I'll just go through it. Okay. You have commands, so you just want to check if eventing pods are running. Great. You inject the broker in the namespace. You get the broker. Um, you have the default, you have event display, Python. So you have some sample code for event display. So what you have here is you would have something like, you know, um, just put a message, eventing display message, and it'll just have a message here. And then when you push and deploy, you put the scan native K service. So this actually talks about the event displays. This is basically the service name and the container. And then once you have the trigger also, you actually, if you do a curl, you have to install the curl pod. And then when you do a curl and you put this message, you actually would be able to get this message. So if you do like the logs for your container, you actually will see a message here. Okay, so that's, that's basically the eventing. Let's go back to the docs. So you have simple delivery, okay? Simple delivery source service. You have the source and the service, you have the YAML file. And uh, yeah, you have the YAML file here. And then what you would do is you would apply this and you verify that the pods are running. And once they are running, you can actually see hello world from cron message. So that's, that's basically a simple delivery. Now you can go into more complex delivery. So what is a complex delivery? In a complex delivery, you have a concept of channel. So channel can basically have multiple subscription in it's not exactly similar to Kafka, but there are similarities of a channel and basically you, you could have multiple subscriptions. So services subscribe, you define a channel. It's a persistence forwarding layer. There are a number of channels. So let's actually look at available channels. So it's pops up Kafka channel in memory channel. We'll use in memory for the demo, but you create the channel, you have the source code in your different services and subscriptions. And once you apply all the subscriptions, you actually will see these messages coming from containers. So that's that's what eventing is. And then you have complex delivery with reply. So with reply, you basically have source channel and services and services can have a reply to the subscription and another service channel, which the third service basically, um, would get this message. So here in this, if you follow these instructions, you actually would see that you would get these messages as hello messages, and then you have the reply. This is Knative reply. You also have an example of um, broker and trigger, right? So you have broker, you have different triggers. You install the broker, you have those different sources, you install the triggers, and then you get these messages. So I'm actually pretty much running out of time here. So feel free to play around with the demo. You have all the instructions you need here, okay? Uh, if you don't have a Google Cloud account, you actually can sign up for a trial account. They give you like some, I think $300 credit or something, and it will, it'll serve you well for a couple of weeks actually. So you can actually play around and have the demo. You don't actually need to pay anything to use the demo, FYI. And my contact information is here. Uh, if you have any problems, feel free to contact me. Um, thank you very much and I'm open to questions. Thank you.